your screen. Hello, everybody. Please, uh, thank you for joining us today. We're just getting a couple of the logistics set up here. Um, my name is Lauren DeLuca, and I'm the founding president of Chronic Illness Advocacy and Awareness Group. And uh, I appreciate everybody's time. We're just going to give it a couple minutes for some other people to trickle in. Um, and Shasta is going to manage the room. Um, go ahead and Actually, you know what, we're almost, uh, we're a couple minutes past now, we can get started. Um, we've got a fairly full room starting. Um, okay, so as I said, my name is Lauren DeLuca. I'm the founding president of Chronic Illness Advocacy and Awareness Group. We are a national nonprofit organization and um, we host the CIG advocacy chat every month um, for our members and our partners to come together and discuss a variety of different topics. Today, we're gonna to be discussing the global efforts uh, for ethical stem cell therapy with um, our special guests uh, from Geostar Mexico. Um, get the next slide. And uh, just quick, we would like to let everybody know there are no uh, financial incentives or relationship between CIG and Geostar Mexico. Um, CIG is funded by public donations and uh, membership fees. And um, we've just come together as like-minded organizations who feel that we can do something positive for the community and are happy to present to you today our joint presentation about what we're doing together and um, you know some of the great services and the missions of Geostar Mexico themselves. Um, so if we want to move to the next slide. Um, so this is the agenda and actually Alfredo, if you want to quickly kind of go over this, because it's kind of going to be more into your area and then I'll take it back after this. Of course. Um, good day, everyone. My name is Alfredo Teran. I represent Geostar Mexico. We're part of Geostar uh, USA, uh, which is, was co-founded by Dr. Anand, who is also with us here today. And we will be talking about ethical stem cell therapy and what does this mean? who we are as a company, and Dr. Anand, his background, his accomplishments, and he's, of course, his observations and profound, deep insights, uh, which are the base of what we do, and our medical offer and testimonials uh, of, of our patients, and a little bit about logistics, locations, and contact. Great. Um, <clears throat> the next slide. And um, so I'm gonna take it he he from here and then we're gonna hand it back uh, to Alfredo and then to Dr. Anad to take over the rest of the presentation. But uh, so from here, we wanted to just talk about, you know, CIEG is a nonprofit organization. We've really been focused on advocacy. So I'm sure a lot of people here are wondering, well, why did CIEG partner with Geostar Mexico? They're kind of, they seem a little bit off the beaten path. And um, so we want to take this opportunity and talk about that. And, um, in particular, you'll see here we mentioned access and ethics and um, CIG's goals for the future of alternative care treatments and research. And the answer to that question kind of ties in to everything stated on the slide here. Um, when we had connected, actually, we were both uh, mentioned and both awarded in the uh, IFA conference as one of the top 100 healthcare leaders. And um, we were both uh, attending or invited to that event, and we were able to connect through that activity. And CIG, as many of you may or may not know, we are focused on patient rights and access to medicine, in particular people with painful illnesses and diseases. And what we've seen in our community particularly is a lot of people are being denied access to um, pain medications, particularly opioid-based pain medications, and are being left in a state of untreated pain and are really um, being offered a lot of ineffective modalities instead of um, pharmacological treatment. And some of those treatments include acupuncture, uh, physical therapy, cognitive behavioral health, um, pain acceptance classes, uh, meditation, um, yoga, therapies like this. All your, a lot of these are non-pharmacological treatments. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of people with advanced pain, illness, disease, we have tried these modalities and failed them time and time again, and which is why many of these patients have been put on opioids. But because of um, social um, desires of our legislative bodies, opioids are starting to um, be promoted or it, there has been a strong campaign to not give these to the public anymore. Um, and our organization stands firmly against that. We believe that they are an important part of the toolbox. And um, as a part of our work, we try to look at what is the current strategy at the federal and international levels 
for harm reduction, in particular with access to opioids, and how they plan to treat people with chronic pain and illness going forward, and to advocate for those people to get if you're not going to be able to get access to opioids, which we are going to be advocating for people to always have that on the table, what other modalities can you get that might actually help you? Because we all know that um, you know meditation, cognitive behavioral health, all the things that I mentioned previously can be effective um, coping mechanisms. They can be effective complementary treatments to an overall treatment plan, but our generally not a replacement for, you know, pharmacological medical treatment for people with advanced illnesses and diseases. We have needs that cannot be met through, um, you know, sadly, small adjustments in uh, lifestyle. We need a little bit more, which is generally medical management. And we have seen billions of dollars being allocated through the annual budget, as well as subsequent bills uh, passed by the legislate that supports access to, to put money into funding other treatments. And it's all of these treatments that we've seen have not worked. So we at CIG see this as an opportunity for us to not just only advocate for people to keep access to opioids on the table, but to also advocate for if we're going to put billions of dollars into research, if we're going to put a shift into healthcare to give people with um, serious disease and illness opportunity to get other modalities so that they can have a better function and a better quality of life, well, then let's do that. Let's not rehash treatments we know don't work and that only have or work only to a limited degree. We want to see that money start getting allocated into treatments that can help. And in particular, that's why we um, ended up kind of creating this partnership with Geostar Mexico is they are able to provide a treatment um, and do research into an area of medicine that has proven to be helpful for individuals with serious illness and disease. So we thought that this would be a great opportunity to partner these two ideas that people do need more options and more treatments, but they don't need to have lots of money pushed into being um, put through dangerous step therapy that leaves them untreated for long periods of time. We would much rather support and see that money and that funding going to modalities that have potential to actually um, to treat, cure, or um, in the case of um, stem cell therapy, to be a regenerative treatment um, instead of have to constantly palliate the care. Um, let's try to make the patients get the best quality and function out of their life that they can. And that's what CIEG sees as the future um, goals for alternative care treatments, is that alternative care treatments can be a wonderful thing. But we want to see that money and that research going into treatments that we've seen actually give positive outcomes to patients, which where the current funding um, is not really going in that direction. So as a part of our advocacy work, we will continue to promote that patients should always have uh, the access to all the toolbox, which includes opioid analgesics for many people. But as well as other treatments such as stem cell um, therapy so that people can start getting, if they're going to get alternative treatments, get alternative treatments that actually can, um, can have a potential positive impact in their future rather than continuously go through uh, step therapy that doesn't really enhance the person's quality of life. Um, so on that point, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the, um, the slideshow over to Alfredo and he's gonna um, share with you a little bit about Geostar Mexico and um, we'll take it from there. And at the end, just everybody, so you know, we do have a chat window. If you have any questions that come up, please feel free to put them in the chat window. And at the end of, um, at the, end of the presentation, we'll have a little bit of time for Q and A for everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lauren. Oh, very well explained. Now I have nothing to say. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you for the warm introduction and for the very accurate uh, description of, of what we're going to talk. And, and, and thank you also for clarifying that stem cell therapy is not alternative medicine. It's not an alternative therapy. It's regenerative medicine, a very valid field within the med medical industry which of course, Dr. Anand will, will explain to us uh, much better than I, than I can. I will be introducing a little bit about Geostar um, Mexico before uh, Dr. Anand uh, graces us with his insights. And 
why do we say um, I, I have the privilege of belonging to this organization, which is a pioneer in innovation in stem cell therapy, um, among the first companies which are multicultural, multinational, uh, with presence in different countries and continents. And that's quite pioneering in, in, in a sense that it involves multidisciplinary focuses and efforts and know-how, constant research, constant uh, sci scientists that work in, in, in betterment of a treatments which allow us personalized protocols. And we actively promote scientific and research material to the public, open source, open for anyone and everyone to consult, which is part of the art ethical approach. Um, the information is there and should be there always for the public to consult to better understand and comprehend what stem cell stem cell therapy is and what it can do for everyone uh, that is an uh, applicant or that could receive it, of course. And uh, I'd like to share this uh, 3A approach in regards to ethical stem cell therapy. We also like to consider ourselves some sort of advocates in regards to stem cell therapy. So it's very important to be aware, to accept and to take action. Awareness, stem cell therapy, it treats the condition, not the symptoms. The traditional medicine, for example, big pharma, treats the symptoms. And sometimes it does help you to heal, but it uh, generates problems in another organ or another tissue or mental health problems, but just like an overview mention of it. And stem cell therapy treats the condition per se. And of course, the symptoms will diminish and might alleviate, but we go to the root cause of the, situ of the situation, of the condition of the disease that uh, patients come to us. And it's very important to be aware of that because in order to, to accept what we must do with that information, knowledge is responsibility. We know it works and we must actively promote it. And that is why research and scientific material that we as a company, as a corporate uh, worldwide generate is readily available for the public in our websites. And, uh, and that's why we take action too. It is stake, stakeholder communication. We have um, contact directly with society in general, with government uh, agencies, bodies uh, that uh, in different countries. It was very interesting, uh, by the way, in India, and Dr. Anand will uh, undoubtedly share this information with us much more accurately, but the government actively promotes stem cell therapy. And for example, here in Mexico, in Geostar, Mexico, it is not that we are not regulated, we are regulated, and that is why it is authorized to perform intrathecal applications, for example, lumbar, hip areas, applications which, which, are, not, are, are, which are not allowed in the United States. Um, each country, as we all know, has its own laws and regulations. And that's a very rich environment in which to work, in which to work as a company, as an organization. And I believe that could apply also to SIAC in, in a way that, uh, well, if it's glo growing global and going global with all this effort, each country has its own uh, uh, behaviors, if, if you will, and legislations and, and laws in which you need to work with in order to bring your solution, to bring your information, and to connect with people. And that requires high ethics standards. Who we are as a company, our mission is to bring treatments closer that have helped, helped thousands around the world to those who need it in America. And in Geostar, Mexico, we mainly cater to the United States and Canada. But of course, we have uh, patients local from Mexico, as well as from Latin America, from Europe, from Asia, uh, even from Africa as well. Uh, we have patients from all, all over the world. However, um, we mainly receive people from the United States and Canada. And uh, in, in order to complement, of course, uh, some, sometimes therapy received in the United States or with research performed in the United States, all under the overview of Dr. Anand. And we are headquartered in San Diego and have several functioning hospitals in India. And currently, well, Geostar Mexico has two clinics, one in Los Algodones and one in Playa del Carmen. And next year, hopefully, we'll open the third one in Cancun. 
And continue with a 3A approach model. Awareness um, built with the dream and shared vision of Dr. Anand. We heard about Dr. Anand's initiative, his vision, his ethical compromise, uh, his ethical uh, premise, his uh, way of thinking, his actions, and we became aware of it. And we said, of course, we're interested. Let's bring that to Mexico. And acceptance in the way that uh, we recognize we are a company within the regenerative medicine field. So what we're doing is valid, is research-based, is based on evidence and medicine. And, and that is why we took action. And we, as a worldwide company, with local coordinated efforts, and hoped to share Dr. Anand's discoveries and continuous research with the world as a whole. And that is our ethical uh, premise. And please, Dr. Anand, um, I'm here for you. You please take uh, the reins of the presentation and in, in, do indicate when you want to continue with this slide, please. Yes, thank you, Alfredo, for a very wonderful introduction of GeoStar. And uh, <clears throat> right now I'm in India and it's like uh, 10, 50 night and enjoying the time with you guys. So thank you again for coming and for this Zoom meeting. And uh, as uh, <clears throat> Alfredo told that uh, Geostar is uh, San Diego, California based institution. I'm the chairman and co-founder of Geostar. And uh, Geostar has its presence all over the world and uh, makes one of the place which is very much near to our heart. And uh, as Alfredo told that uh, US has certain uh, restrictions or I can say some conservative thinking about stem cell right now. And Mexico is open and uh, we are uh, regulated by Mexican FDA and uh, they allow us to work in the field of stem cell science. But before coming on this topic of stem cell science, let me tell you that I am among few people who started this field of stem cell science in America, working at University of California, San Diego Medical School. I started this field of stem cell in 2000. And before that, I was working on the gene therapy. And uh, in fact, before coming to US, I was uh, in Japan and uh, I was awarded uh, by Prime Minister of Japan, the Young Scientist Award. And uh, I, that time I was doing gene therapy and I cloned almost 23 genes in, in just a few months. So the Japanese uh, scientists were very much impressed and they requested, uh, in fact, government of Japan to give me the same award second time. And I, I was awarded again second time which is generally impossible in Japan to get the same award two times for one person because they wanted me to keep in Japan. So I was there from 1997 to 2000, almost three years, and showed first time in 99 that pancreatic gene can be changed. And uh, so that opens the door for treatment of the diabetes. And I showed this finding at San Diego, it was a huge conference called Plant and Animal Genome Conference. And I was showing this data that yes, you may change pancreatic gene and it, so you may really treat diabetes using gene therapy. And it was so, people were so much excited after seeing this. And I received several offers from different universities of uh, US, starting from Harvard, UCLA, all these places. And uh, San Diego is a beautiful place, weather is wonderful. And of course, very good universities and research institutes are there. Like University of California, San Diego itself is a very wonderful university. And if you know, the Salk Research Institute is also in San Diego. And if you know, the Salk is the person who invented polio vaccine in 55. So Salk, Burnham, UC San Diego, Scripps, a lot of Nobel Prize winners in San Diego. So I choose to be in San Diego. And that's my journey from Japan to San Diego. So 
Uh, I was doing, as I told, I was doing gene therapy, but it's a little complex. It is a little complex in comparison to stem cell science. And I was continuously thinking how to face the challenge of this metabolic diseases, because it's very difficult to manage the metabolic diseases. And gene, yes, it can be managed using gene therapy. Like COVID-19 vaccine uh, right now, like Moderna and uh, Pfizer, which is using right now, it is a gene therapy vaccine. So it's not a classical vaccine like polio, okay? But it's a gene therapy vaccine. And this particular, you will be surprised to know, this particular technique of vaccine, which right now Moderna and uh, Pfizer are using, I, show, I published the paper in 2005 in vaccine. And exactly I showed how you can use DNA to make a vaccine. In 2005, like 15 years back, I showed exactly the same technique, which today is applied to manage this COVID-19. So that was, but again, it was gene therapy. And uh, as I told, I was always concerned how to really manage this metabolic diseases. And then I was knowing that there's master cell in the body called stem cells. And stem cell makes the entire body. Then it is obvious to conclude that body is nothing but the combination of the organs. It means stem cell is making each and every single organs. And when, then I thought, is it possible to really take out the stem cell in the lab and uh, culture it and propagate in? And is it possible to really make different organs using stem cell? And I started working in 2000. I showed first time in 2003, four and five, six, that you may make the blood using stem cell. And right now we are making uh, red blood cell using stem cell, which is patented on the name of Geostar. And now uh, we are going to make red blood cell for transfusion purposes. And if you know, uh, the main problem in the blood transfusion is three, three problems. One is if you transfer blood from one person to another person, you need to match the blood group. Second, uh, you need enough blood supply. And third, every time you have to scan the blood for known disease or unknown disease, because there, is, there are chances that through blood transfusion, a person may get some kind of disease. To solve this all three problems, I differentiated and made the red blood cell using stem cell, which is in lab made. So because it is in lab made, so there is no chance of transfer of the disease. Second, because you are manufacturing, so you can make enough in number. And third, it is O negative, so it is universal donor. So you don't need to match it. Uh, so that is one thing. Then, uh, and I'm telling again, I, I started publishing on these things in topmost journals, 2003, four, five. So first time I showed that, yes, you may generate red blood cell or blood cell using stem cells. After that, I, uh, we were studying in the medical school up to 2005, six, that if brain or neurons are damaged, you may not repair it. Then I thought, is it possible to re really repair the neurons using the stem cells? And then I showed first time to the world in 2006 that yes, you may uh, repair the damaged brain using a stem cell that was published again, topmost journal called stem cells. And then medical school started teaching, yes, you, if the neurons or brain is damaged or some kind of problem in the brain, you may, you may really use a stem cell to repair these damaged brains. And uh, then seeing this, uh, one clinical trial went uh, through University of California, Irvine, where I was the part of this study that to repair the spinal cord injury because spinal cord injury is, you know, it's very dangerous. Generally, it, is, it occurs in the young people and because of the biking and sport and all these things, they don't realize that they are going to really have this problem. And uh, so uh, they get a spinal cord injury and there's no treatment for this. So we tried to make this. And this was the first ever clinical trial approved by US FDA to use embryonic stem cell Embryonic stem cell we don't use right now, but I'm just letting you know the science uh, I developed and how it went ahead. And today we are talking about stem cell. So all these things uh, I started uh, in 2000 with several other scientists. 
And so I showed, yes, you may repair the spinal cord injury and brain. And then there is the autoimmune disease that is called Crohn's disease, uh, which is an intestinal problem. And, uh, and that's a kind of autoimmune disease. So there is no treatment of Crohn's. So I thought, is it possible to treat the Crohn's using stem cells? And then I showed in 2007, first time again to the world that, yes, you may use Crohn's disease using a stem cell. So these are uh, the several, several things happen. And then finally, I started thinking, okay, that I must start treating people and how to do that. So I was a little lucky that I was invited by uh, Prime Minister of India. And we are making world biggest stem cell transplant hospital in India with Prime Minister of India. And uh, we have several hospitals in India. We have in Mexico, we are in Japan, we are in China. So several countries. Uh, so that's, that's our brief introduction. But the most interesting thing I would like to share with you guys that when COVID came in 2000 and there was no vaccine available that time in 2000, January, February. So I thought, is it possible to manage COVID using stem cells? And uh, I knew this particular stem cell, uh, which right now we are working also, that have very wonderful character. First, if you inject, infuse in the body, this particular stem cell, it manages the immune system. And if there is some inflammation or some immune problem, it goes and balance those immune system. And if there is some inflammatory genes upregul upregulated, then these stem cell goes and downregulate this inflammatory gene action. And in, in the COVID, you, you know, the virus, cause, virus causes very strong inflammation. And that's what the lung, and finally damage the lung. So I designed the entire protocol, clinical protocol, and sent to FDA in 2000 uh, uh, March, I think. And FDA was very kind and immediately they approved. So we are among the few first company who got the approval from US FDA to treat COVID-19 patient using stem cells. And we saved several patients and even the patient were in the, under the coma for 60 days. We brought them back from the coma. And uh, of course it was very much welcomed. I, uh, Geostar and I was all the new channels and media and all these things. So this was wonderful things and wonders may be done using stem cells. And we have treated several patients around the world using stem cell related to autoimmune disease like arthritis and all these things, the brain diseases, neural diseases, blood related diseases. So that's our brief introduction and I'll again uh, transfer to Alfredo because uh, if he, because he has having these some slide to I think share. So Alfredo, can you uh, of course, continue? Of course, Dr. Anand, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the for, for the introduction and for sharing with us the information. Now, um, th this, these are some slides in which we, we share with, with the audience the things you mentioned. And I believe this is Prime Minister Moody. Is that correct? You Dr. are right, Anand? you are right. You are right. Excellent. And uh, we also have uh, these uh, prize you received in, 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 at Philippines by the Prime yeah. Minister of China. Could you please share with us a little yeah, bit yeah, about this that? Is, this, is, this, is, this slide is telling about Gushi Peace Prize, which is a kind of a Nobel Prize. And I, here I'm invited to give the, this particular prize to Health Minister of China. Excellent. So I, 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 I gave the prize to Health Minister of China here. Okay. Okay. Th thank you very much, Doctor. And uh, we also have... Uh, this U.S. Congressional Award that you received. Could you please tell us a little bit about that? You are right. Yeah, so the U.S. Congress awarded me, several Congress people men, awarded me the, my contribution in the field of stem cell science and pioneering in, in this field of stem cell science because, uh, you know, up to 2004, uh, uh, it was very difficult to work on stem cell science and uh, because of some ethical issues and some misconception that stem cells are coming from the embryo and all these things because of uh, embryonic stem cell. Certainly we don't use embryonic stem cell. We, we are much, much advanced. Right now we can take stem cell from 
my, like I can take my stem cell and I can <laughs> treat uh, or, or infuse uh, that stem cell to Alfredo without any problem. So we are much advanced. Thank but, you, Doctor. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> or, 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 or vice versa. I can take Alfredo's stem cell and uh, get my anti aging treatment. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Because you are very young and I'm getting a little old now. <laughs> but why, sir? <laughs> so 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 that was misconception and I, I very politely and nicely handled this situation in california and because of that and also when Arnal Schwarzenegger wanted to become governor of california in 2004 so he told to be people of california that if you vote me i will approve uh, stem cell research in california and I was working uh, very hard for this prop. And there was a proposition 71, prop 71, we say, that was proposed. And I was lucky and uh, that people of California, and again, I humbly salute to people of California, they voted for prop 71. And uh, uh, stem cell was approved. And of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger became governor of California because of that particular issue. And uh, he uh, immediately approved stem cell research in California and California Institute of Regenerative Medicine was formed that is called CIRM and Serum funded $3 billion to California. And after that incidence only, entire world started working in the field of stem cell science. So that's the beauty of uh, struggle with me, uh, I and few other scientists work very hard and whatever we are talking today because of that initiative of Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, our struggle and finally and still you see we are talking that okay stem cell is accepted by here or there or not but after I'm talking 2004 now to, to this is 2000 uh, to 2021 still we are having the debate okay that oh yes this stem cell science is good not good should go ahead, not go ahead. But it is very logical to think that whatever happened last 20 years, thousands of publications came in the field of stem cell science and each and every single publication telling that yes, stem cell works and in very significant manner and very non-harmful way, very natural way to treat the people. Most natural way given by the nature to us to repair our damaged organs. So. Uh, that's what it is. And that's what the entire world is working right now on its field of stem cell and having uh, this technology and treating several patients who are not having any other option in the classical medicine. So this is the only option because this is given by nature. So uh, Alfredo, I, if I'm, uh, I think I'm taking a lot of time. <laughs> no, it, it, it's okay, doctor. And we could, we could of course, listen to, to such information. I, I took into account that you mentioned uh, right now about the or organic and natural way in which stem cell therapy helps us. So I consider this a great moment to, if you could share please with us um, a little bit about the stack types of stem cells and, and we, I understand there are two types of stem cells. Yeah, yeah. So the types, types are, there are different types of stem cell depending on the classification, the origin and uh, their, their characters, you know. So origin means there are two kind of basically, if it is coming from, uh, if patient himself is giving a stem cell, again, it is going back to his body. That is called autologous stem cell, which is patient's own stem cell is, uh, is used to treat patient's own problems. And there is allogenous, which I told like, uh, I can take Alfredo's stem cell for me. So if we are transferring uh, stem cell from donor to host, so both, both this is two main types of stem cell, which generally we are using. And uh, now, because as I told, the technology is so advanced, so we really don't need to use patient's own stem cell. We, and particularly in Mexico, because we, we are allowed to use other people's stem cell, or we can use the stem cell bank, in fact, I can, if I, 
So uh, it is, uh, and the benefit of this bank is because it is ready to go. It is well characterized. It is coming from a very healthy donor and uh, it has all the best character of stem cell. So we, you don't need to really give pain to patient because the patient who is coming is already very sick. And yes, we can take the patient the stem cell without any problem. But once you take the stem cell out from the patient, you give little pain to patient. So why unnecessary to give pain to patient when we have quality of stem cell are already available to give to patient. So that's what we prefer allogenase because that's more easy and good for patient. Uh, so that's what two kinds of stem cell. So what we understand doctor that perhaps uh, for example, people who are uh, in pain due to chronic or degenerative conditions it could generate further even uh, further inconvenience and pain, as you mentioned, uh, if we go through the autologous stem cell process, which would require a liposuction, right? So that is yes, why allergenic is the best option. Yeah. So, so autologous stem cell can be taken from uh, fat cells, which is belly fat generally, but it can be taken from the uh, bone marrow also. Bone marrow again, very painful to take out from the drill, the bone marrow and then bone and take out the bone marrow and uh, or, or do lipo aspiration uh, from the belly fat. So these, these are all not too pain, too much painful, but you, we have to think that patient who is already sick and having a lot of suffering. Are, so we do not want uh, unnecessary to give more pain and suffering to the patient. That's the only reason we don't prefer autologous stem cell, but uh, we can do, I mean to say, and we can collect the autologous stem cell. Thank you, thank you, doctor. And here in Geostar, Mexico, we some of the stem cells we utilize are the adipose tissue. Could you please tell us a little bit more about the, their, their properties or nation, their nature? Yes, so, so this uh, particular stem cell, which we are using now, it is called as mesenchymal stem cell. And so, as I told, we are not using any embryonic stem cell right now. It, we, we use all only adult stem cell. So this particular stem cell uh, is coming uh, from the belly fat. And generally what happens when we are adult, our stem cell goes and sleeps at different places like bone marrow or belly fat. So we do little lipoaspiration like 200 milliliter fat and then we take this fat in the lab and then magic is done there with our scientists. So they take out the system cells and they characterize the system cell. They qualify each and each and every single stem cells character wise and making sure that this has the character of stem cells. And then once it is done, we count and all these things and then it can be reinfused back to the patient for the very specialized treatment depending on the disease of the patient. So it's the entire protocol, but I just simplifying it because of the time const constraint. But if there is some specific question, sure, I, I may reply always that. Thank you, thank you, doctor. We will have a, a brief question and answer session at the end of the, of the video conference. And I'm sure uh, some of our participants might have answers. Well, fortunately, there are several participants listening to us today. Uh, doctor, and for example, for a ALS condition, um, how would stem cell therapy uh, provide a relief or work? Uh, very good, in fact, uh, Alfred. Was, thank you for telling me. So, as we know, that uh, uh, ALS is uh, an autoimmune disease. It's related with the, it's a neuromuscular problem, and particularly this autoimmune disease, our nerve neurons get damaged because of the immune system. And if you know in autoimmune disease, what happens that your, our immune system is made for uh, serving the purpose to defense our body from foreign or any kind of problems, foreign invasion or infection. Sometimes what happens, our own immune system is start thinking a particular organ as if and start taking it as a foreign body and because of misinformation. And once 
it get that information, it start attacking that particular organ. And that's what is the autoimmune disease because uh, immune system is start killing your own body or some, some kind of organ. So in LS, it start thinking that neurons or particularly the myelin sheet of the neuron is foreign body and it start uh, eating that and killing that. And that's where the neurons getting damaged, sarks, uh, short circuiting and ALS and neuromuscular problem. So this particular stem cell, which we are using, as I told it is mesenchymal stem cell. It has very extraordinary character. It works at three very strong steps. First, it goes and down regulate or blocks those inflammatory gene action, which is upregulated because of the mess, mess, messing up of the immune system. And then secondly, because this, so inflammatory genes action are stopped. So there is no inflammation for the inflammation. And then it manages the imbalance of your immune system. So once the, because of that, only the autoimmunity is uh, happening. So it manages and balance the imbalance of the immune system. So the attack, which is done by our uh, immune system is finally stopped. So now body is continuously trying to regenerate itself. So when the inflammatory gene section are blocked, inflammatory cytokines are blocked and uh, immune system is balanced, then the progress of the disease stops. And progress of the disease stop means it's the big, big, big achievement itself in the particularly in case of neural diseases. And then these particular stem cells start secreting the molecules and giving the message, repair yourself. Okay. So enhance the repair of the damaged neurons. So the neur neurons which are damaged now is, start getting repaired. So this problem is started getting reversed. So disease now under the recovery phase. And then there are several, several kind of lifestyle change and all these things we, which we recommend. It's very personalized medicine. And if patient follows that and carefully, so patient may get recovered from this ALS. So, and, and so same way, they, because it's an autoimmune disease, so same with the arthritis, same way is the uh, multiple sclerosis. You name it, several autoimmune diseases, where like uh, skin uh, psoriasis. We have treated, you know, Alfred, we have treated several skin psoriasis patients. There is no treatment. Same way as the Crohn's, which is autoimmune disease. So, yes, it is very personalized and protocol is a little changed depending on patient and age and what other kind of uh, elements a patient may have. But in general, I'm talking. Okay. So, this is what is... Uh, the way this particular stem cell may treat. Of course, or manage doctor. The th th thank, you, thank you for that information. Um, uh, you, you mentioned that each protocol depends on each patient according to their conditions and specific situations. And that is, I believe, one of the things that differentiates us uh, in comparison to other uh, medical providers that each protocol, each patient's conditions, we share that uh, and it comes through you. So that is why we are able to personalize and program the stem cells in, in according to what each patient needs. Um, correct. Am I correct, doctor? You're right, you're right. So, so it is very personalized actually. And uh, we, we make the protocol with the uh, much discussion with the, our clinician a team. You know, we have a strong team of scientists and clinicians uh, under my direction. And so it was done. I take uh, the scientific part and clinician takes the clinical part of the, uh, each medical director, like at Mexico, uh, if, it, we, if I'm talking about Las Algodonas or Guadalajara, so Gualahar is Dr. Rodriguez, uh, is our medical director, and here is Dr. Daniel at Las Algronas. So they are very efficient and working since long last several years with me in this stem cell science. So it's a team effort. And they have been very, very fortunate to, to learn with you as well. 
you are right you are right thank you very much for praising me <laughs> yes i do my best to help the people okay. thank you with doctor the, with the logical science and for example doctor in in the case of knee pain or knee osteoarthritis um what are we seeing here in the screen so let me change, change the screen here yeah. so so here you know that, that uh, same way, you know, this stem cell and this, this is the arthritis, osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, osteoarthritis is this aging and all this problem related knee injury, but uh, rheumatoid arthritis, you know, the autoimmune disease. And in the both, both the cases, the, uh, the uh, syn synovial fluid and uh, cartilage tear, and sometimes the gap is low and then bone to bone or so. The surgery is the only option in the modern medicine. And uh, we, we use the system so it goes and regenerate uh, the damage. And uh, we saved several people uh, not to go for surgery, which is quite painful. And it takes a lot of time in healing. And generally, it happens in old days. Most of the time, after 55 or 65 uh, year age, so the healing process is also slow, but once you give stem cells, so we repopulate the area and uh, with the stem cells and then it works. So even the older person may get better outcome uh, with the knee problem and uh, he, this knee may get regenerated. Uh, so it is, it is best, one of the best options uh, alternate to the surgery, which is quite painful. It takes a lot of time. And to do it in a nat natural way and through your own body. You are right, you are right. And in so, this so situation, this is, doctor, this, what are we observing now? It's uh, no yeah. arthritis, lateral femoral condyle. Yeah, so this is same uh, uh, like uh, the uh, our cushion, you know, the knee has a cushion and this gap and that is gone so we use the stem cell and we see that after the treatment the the person get recovered and uh, he could perform his day-to-day -day life uh, coming up and down on the stairs or the sport related related injuries sometime and taking tennis as you know that one of our very beloved friend i do not want to take his name because of the <laughs> because of the hip and uh, uh, the confidentiality. So he, he is like 76 year old and he, he plays tennis. And because of that, he, he told his shoulder and uh, doctors in US told you have to go for surgery. And uh, uh, he, he told, no, he doesn't want to go for surgery. And he came to Las Alpunas and we gave his stem cell. Now he's fine. And doctors are surprised in US that <laughs> oh, what you did, there's nothing you can do without surgery, but it's fine now. So there are, there are good things with this stem cell. Many, many good things, many good out outcomes. And the best, best thing, it is not really harmful. There's almost, we, we touch it, we never saw any side effect till today. Any, any negative side effect with any, with any patient, uh, regardless of condition? No, we, we never, we never uh, saw in our case, in our facilities, because we are very careful. And it, it again, it, we are hardcore researcher. I, so we know what is the stem cell. I started the field. So we are very different in comparison to other people. And we are very conservative also. We take all kind of care and reporting and uh, protocols and discussion about the patients. And then we design the protocols and we use that. So we are very different than uh, what you see in general <laughs> stem cell market. Of course, doctor, thank you. And based with what, uh, with what we've spoken with Dr. Anand, um, our medical offer mainly consists in these three uh, groups, which is, which is disease therapy, performance and anti-aging therapy and pain management. And here we have a little, uh, some examples, a little bit of what each consists. In disease therapy, we may observe that it's uh, sometimes generative or chronic 
conditions and even certain, certain kidney disease, liver disease, diabetes, arthritis. Uh, there's even been cases with we treated with ED and obviously only males. And COPD is a common condition that we regularly treat in our facilities. And we've also treated Parkinson's. And in this, in this respect, I invite you to uh, please visit our, our pages or geostarmexico.com. In our YouTube channel, there are many testimonials of patients that have come to our facilities. And this will un undoubtedly provide you more information of who we are and what we do. And uh, a little bit about uh, medical offer um, also, uh, some conditions uh, just listed here. We retake the fact that we use mesenchymal stem cells. And uh, this is a very special concept that I've learned recently. Um, I mean, in a way of understanding adequately is immunomodulation, Dr. Anand. And we've actually promoted a content in this respect, uh, the importance of stem cell therapy in regards to helping the immune system regulate. Um, I, I understand that sometimes certain conditions stimulate the immune system further than it should. And sometimes the immune system attacks or even hurts us if it's not regulated. Um, from what I understood, Dr. Anand. Yes, you're right, Alfredo. And then they, in, it is amazing, you know, because uh, whatever disease you take, you know, it starts with the inflammation. And with, if the inflammation is not checked, okay, then it became, became chronic and it start damaging that organ. And then we start realizing that we have some kind of problem in the body. And that inflammation starts with the inflammatory gene sites. So that's, that's the big thing. Okay. And this particular mesenchymal stem cell, again, I, I get sometimes fascinated with the nature. You know, it is given by nature. It is already in our body. And this has particular specific character to manage this imbalance of the immune system. And and also block that inflammatory gene action and third, secrete the molecule to enhance the regeneration of the damaged organ. Because uh, with the aging, the number of this particular stem cell gets down in the body. That's the reason only we don't get repaired by ourselves. But during young time, you see, uh, once we are young, like 14, 15 year old, uh, if there's some damage in the body, we don't care. We don't do, go to doctor. Even, even we don't realize that we have damage. It gets repaired automatically. Why? Because we have a lot of stem cells available in the body. Once we are old, the number of stem cells exponentially goes down in the, our body. And if there is some problem, because the number of stem cells are not enough, so we get disease or problem or degeneration in organs or damage of the organ. So the concept is simple. Then just use this particular stem cell and infuse in the blood and it is going to go in your body and going to repair your body. That's the concept. Yes, how to do it? Yes, it's a complex science, which we do. It is. Um, thank, thank you, doctor, uh, for, for the support and the information. D taking this into account, uh, this is a general overview of uh, a medical treatment in Geostar, or you contact us, one of our patient coordinators assist you. And most of the times we have, uh, we are able to connect directly with the medical doctors and the patients. What we usually do are video calls, video conference such as this. So the patients may actually speak directly with the medical uh, practitioners in each of our clinics. Dr. Ananda already mentioned our Algodones Clinic uh, and our Guadalajara uh, support with Dr. Carlos Rodriguez. There is also the Playa del Carmen Clinic and, and, and next year, hopefully Cancun. So we're talking about four locations in Mexico in which you may come and receive treatment and we provide follow-up. Um, it's very, during this uh, before, during and after, it is important to consider uh, that based on your last application, let's say that today you had a, a 
after the treatment. And the next two, three weeks are uh, the possible side effects, which are tend to be uh, lots of energy and perhaps unable to, to, well, to sleep um, like immediately. Or if you were unable to sleep, now you sleep a lot, of, a lot better and you have this uh, energy, this, this of your hormones are starting to stabilize your immune system, an overall well-being. And it is important to, to state this because sometimes patients after their, their treatment are, are confused in a way that, why, why do I feel this way? Well, it's the stem cells that are working and it's part of the process. And, and there, there was always some kind of response and if, in this way, you shouldn't feel like uh, pressured to see immediate results from one day to another, from two or three weeks, or even a month. There is a period. That is why the follow-up we do, is there, it consists of a three-week follow-up, and then a three-month follow-up, and then a year follow-up. This is the time frame in which stem cells work in, in the body. And it's very important to take this into consideration um, because it helps us to, to make um, honest, honest expectations, what to expect from the stem cell uh, treatment. We, as we mentioned before, ethically, we are uh, obliged to indicate to our patients, uh, we cannot say this will cure you, this will help you, but we cannot ethically say this will cure you because there are conditions that are chronic, that are degenerative, that may, there are no known cures. For example, for a, a, patients with ALS, with MS, um, they've mentioned one, two years after the therapy. Um, I'm, I'm the same. I, I haven't feel any changes, changes. And that is per se a success because if you suffer a chronic degenerative condition and you haven't worsened after receiving stem cell therapy, that is by itself a success. Remember the three basic premises of regenerative medicine, slow down, stop and regenerate. And each of the, if these premises are by itself a success. Slow down the, the, the symptoms, the condition, stop the situation and regenerate the damage done to tissue and organs. That, that is uh, why stem cell therapy belongs also to uh, within the regenerative medicine field. These are some of the testimonials you'll be able to locate on our different uh, social media, on our YouTube channel, our webpage. We've treated con uh, these conditions, MS, ALS, spinal cord, um, ulcerative arthritis. And as you can see, stem cell therapy is um, open for everyone. This is a natural solution blessed uh, that we have it in our own bodies. And uh, thanks to the efforts of decades uh, for, from illustrious people such as Dr. Anand, it is now uh, easier than ever and closer than ever to access to these kinds of treatments and therapies. And I believe it's really important to, to state this fact that if it weren't for the efforts of the global community and local places, and the, the active promotion of certain government bodies, of certain institutions, academic research centers um, to identify what stem cell therapy can do for us and actually translate it to performable protocols. But we wouldn't be able to, to enjoy this option of, of healing, of healing with our own bodies. And a little bit about locations, logistics and contact. Here we can observe the facilities uh, we we have in Playa del Carmen. And uh, well, Playa del Carmen has its benefits. It's near Florida. So if there's anyone listening to us in the East Coast, this is a, a closer clinic you, you, to which you may accompany us. You may also join, join us, of course, in Los Algodones or Guadalajara. And uh, well, but this is the closest one, if, if you will. They're top of the line, they are state of the art facilities. And it's uh, the, our newest clinic, actually. Here are some examples of, of where we perform the treatments, where we work, all with the due licenses of the Mexican equivalent FDA, 
which is COFEPRIS, C-O-F-E-P-R-I-S. That's the Mexican equivalent of the FDA, which is uh, very robust, as we mentioned earlier. It's not that we are not regulated and it's not that it's uh, just a free for all. Sometimes patients believe that, oh, it's Mexico, you can do anything. Not in this case. We're actually quite regulated and fortunately, our legislative body um, decided to take a step forward and trust stem cell therapy. And that is why we are routinely subjected, subjected to, rev to reviews, to visits from the competent uh, govern governmental bodies to ins inspect, uh, inspect the facilities that all of our personnel has the adequate uh, licenses and permits and know-how. And we are uh, periodically checked upon, which is quite necessary. And I make this invitation to anyone listening and interested in receiving stem cell therapy. Please verify that who you're talking with has the correct licenses to operate a stem cell bank and to perform uh, transplants. It's very important. These are our facilities in um, Los Algodones. This is the main, uh, the main view from the outside and reception. This is our first location and it's been up fully functional and operating for almost six years. It's important to mention that our clinics have the capacity of treating, treating 40 people per month uh, with all due uh, considerations because sometimes patients wonder, how come you, you have always availability? You always have availability. Well, it's because we have currently three places to treat people and we have sufficient personnel to treat 40 patients in each uh, clinic per month. And the upcoming year we'll have four. That is why we always have availability and you should feel uh, no worry that uh, you, doors are always, are always opened for you and you star. Now, um, I've, I've given some time for questions and answers. I believe there are some questions and answers that our audience would like to share with us. Hi, um, this is Shasta. I'm gonna go ahead and I've given everybody their place in line. So I'm just gonna read them off to you one at a time. So the first one, we have a question. Have you ever replaced cartilage in the knees via producing stem cells in the lab or a patient's stem cells? Yeah, uh, in the lab, yes, uh, it's, it's easy to uh, make or uh, differentiate the, uh, or make the cartilage using the stem cells. But uh, important is not that what we do in the lab, important is uh, ultimately how you're going to translate that in the patients. And we treated several patients which has uh, cartilage injury and uh, cartilage degeneracy. So I'm sorry, yes. Okay, very good, thank you. Moving on to the next question, we have, can you clarify transparency of both, number one, a doctor clinic treatment results and number two, specific treatment pricing? And then they went on to ask, is there a published listing of Geostar Mexico prices? Yeah, Alfredo. Sure, uh, in regards to the public listing of uh, Geostar Mexico prices, uh, we have, uh, we work with several medical tourism promoters, such as medical tourism, uh, medical departures, placid weight. Our prices are up there. However, we do invite you to contact us directly and we are more than willing to give you uh, prices on any condition on every patient. It can't be said that there is a fixed price for, uh, for a treatment or for a condition because it depends on the patient's condition. Remember, these, th this is personalized medicine and a personalized protocol. And according to the necessities of each patient is uh, the price that will be assigned to the treatment there, there are, however, however, ballpark figures uh, which are readily available in, in set sources. Also, please contact us and we are more than willing to give you that information without, without any uh, fear of, of being judged or, or something. 
And Shasta, the first question uh, was in regards to, could you please repeat that for me? Oh, sure, not a problem. Can you clarify transparency of both, number one, a doctor clinic treatment results, and number two was specific treatment pricing? Okay, in regards to transparency, uh, you could also visit our web website and contact us, call us directly. There is plenty of information in all of our digital channels and, and there are pub our published research is also up in the internet and we share, with the, we share it actively on our blog. The research our scientists, scientist group does in, in cooperation with Dr. Anand the, the information is, is all up there in our website, and we are also willing to, to receive calls in order for you to ask specifically, like, have you researched for arthritis, and what results have you seen, and we will refer you to testimonials, and the testimonials that we can share, because as Dr. Anand mentioned, the confidentiality is, is very important um, for us, so some patients are unwilling to share a, a video or a testimonial, and we respect that, of course, and some are uh, willing to share that, and that is the information, only authorized information is what we, we share in regards to patients. In regards to research, it's all on, on our website, on our digital channels, and again, I, we invite you to give us a call anytime. Thank you. Okay, question number three, we have, do or have you encountered anyone with Charcot-Marie tooth disease? Um, I'm unable to, to answer the, this one uh, specifically at the moment. Dr. Anand, could you, could you help me a little bit, please? Yes. Okay. okay, one second. Uh, can, can you uh, tell me, because I could not hear because uh, I'm in, as I'm in India right now, so can you uh, text me or uh, sure. email me the name? I'll so I send can, it. Yeah, so I'll I send can it right over. Reply, reply, reply you maybe using email. Okay, okay. all right. Thank you. I'll send that or right text over to you because I'm getting a lot of uh, uh, signal problem. In fact, sure. Okay. No because problem. it's late night now, like almost midnight here. So yeah. Okay. No problem. I'll get that right over. Um, yeah. The next question we have, is there a clinical publication of the number of procedures and results performed by the doctor in clinic? Yeah, so there are a lot of, as I told, uh, there is, yes, uh, there is specific publications related to the uh, different kind of uh, treatment and the uh, development of the treatment protocols and uh, testimonials, so yes, Answer is yes, there are a lot of publications in different media and uh, journals, scientific journals. All right, uh, the next question we have is, let's see. Is a stem cell likely to contain abnormalities due to environmental hazards, or are these issues taken into account when stem cells are harvested? Uh, uh, so this is, uh lab related question uh, if i understand the how indirectly if i i ask i can make this question more sim simplified uh, that how we are har harvesting the stem cell and what kind of factors we use to harvest the stem cells so that that is the question in fact so that is our a very specific uh, ip and uh, the answer is yes, we do. We care all kind of uh, parameters. We take all kind of care, characterization and quality check for the stem cells. Uh, so that is the answer of this question. Okay. And what was the first one? First one, first, I think uh, if I, I missed the first one. I'll read it to you again. It says, is uh, in a stem cell likely to contain abnormalities due to environmental hazards? Or are these oh, issues oh. taken into account? So that was the entire question. Okay, okay. So yes, the stem, uh, environment may create problems with stem cells, certainly. And that's the reason we get the several degenerative diseases because of several environmental factors impacting our body. 
Uh, and so, of course, stem cell gives the response towards the environment very strongly. And that's where it is targeted for different kind of problems. So um, it's very sensitive to environments. Answer is yes. The next question, thank you for that. The next question, um, let's see. And this one actually was more of a specific question to this individual's private information. And so I reached out and asked them if um, I could forward this to you privately, but I believe I can ask it in a more generalized term way. In your opinion, mm -hmm. if a person has had the treatment and it's been about a month and they haven't mm -hmm. seen anything, anything, any significant changes, do you think that's mm -hmm. too early? Again, it, it depends uh, exactly what kind of disease you are going to treat. If something is autoimmune sure. disease or related to the immune system, you will see the change within one week. But if something is related to the autoimmunity, complexities, neural, and uh, several other combinations, yes, you may not see any difference uh, uh, up to one month, two months, three months, then it's complex to answer. But in general, you should see some positive changes within two to three weeks. That is why we Thank provide, you. as we mentioned, follow-ups, three weeks, uh, a, month, a month, three months, and a year. To yeah. It depends on any condition. Yes, Alfredo, that is correct. Thank you. Moving on to the next question. Have you had success in repairing damaged disc material in the spine? Yes, answer is yes. Okay, and let's see. Would stem cells work for the knee cartilage if the patient is in their late 70s? Uh, yes, it, it, it does not depend on the patient age, because the stem cell which we inject is in stem cells. That job is to regenerate the, uh, any kind of degeneration. So it, uh, the age of the patient really does not matter in this. Okay, thank what you. Matters is, what matters is how severe problem is. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the next question. Do stem cells work for hand tremors as in Parkinson's? Yes, and uh, we, as we have wonderful, in fact, testimonial, uh, Alfredo may send you. We and do. Parkinson, one of the disease which stem cell really helps a lot in that. We do, we even have patients that have come uh, two, three times to our clinics to receive uh, reinforcements to, for they, so for they can maintain their quality of life with uh, little symptoms and and stop or slow down, as we mentioned, slow down, stop, regenerate uh, their condition. Moving on to the next question. It says specifically to treat diabetes, price mm -hmm. and time in Mexico and San Diego. Uh, we, let me clarify, we don't do any treatment in you know, San Diego. We do only research in the USA. And our, our treatments are in different countries. One of them is Mexico. So, Thank you. so the price of the Mexico, Alfredo will tell you. Of course, and, and, and I've already checked. Uh, thank you, doctor. I, I've checked who asked this question and we will be contact, contacting uh, this, this person to provide the follow-up. Excellent. Uh, moving on to the next question. What benefits are received from stem cell injections? In diabetes, type two? They did not specify. Um, yeah, no, there was no specification on the disease process for this question. I think okay, so general, 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 answer, general answer is simple yeah. that uh, once it should see the prog stop in the progress of the disease and uh, most of the time, if he manages his life, he shall and other things and follows the instruction of the doctor, he may see the reversal of the disease. But 
I'm talking very general as this question is very generalized. Of course. Okay, moving on to the next question. Um, starts out by saying, in general, have you had success in treating autoimmune diseases such as pulmonary sarcoidosis and fibromyalgia? Exactly, yes. So uh, as I told the autoimmune diseases are uh, this particular stem cell, which is mesenchymal stem cell, is best stem cell to manage the autoimmune diseases. Okay, very good. Um, moving on, we have, is there a cure for children with diabetes type 1 with stem cell therapy? As you know, that is stem, uh, type 1 diabetes is autoimmune disease. And uh, there is a specific marker that is C peptide, which tells in the, the activity of pancreas. If there is some pancreas remaining, it is very much possible to manage the type 1 diabetes in the kids using stem cells. The last question is, um, do you have a stem cell clinic in Canada? No, not right now. Okay, thank you. Questions have all been responded to. Thank you very much. Thank you, doctor. That was an excellent um, Q&A portion there. Um, thank you everybody for um, participating. Um, is there anything else that um, either of you would like to add um, before we start kind of bringing this to a conclusion? Alfredo or Dr. Anand? Doctor? I'm, I'm fine. And uh, if you guys allow me, I may go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. I just have um, just wanted to add a little insight at the end and a little interjection on especially something that Alfredo had mentioned is, you know, um, the uh, the concept of honest expectations. And um, just to kind of share with the room a little bit, that was actually one of the driving reasons that we felt that, um, you know, GeoStar Mexico was a really good fit here at CIAG is, um, you know, the ability to work with patients and be able to tell them realistic expectations about what they can get um, through the whole entire treatment process, you know, through intake, through uh, the process of getting the treatment, all the way to, you um, you know, how well it's going to respond to you, because there has been a lot of problems, especially in the current um, trending of, uh, especially in American uh, industry in regards to um, the, the treatment of pain, a lot of misinformation about treatments that can do uh, overselling their ability to help you. And it's become almost a predatory industry and we've seen it get it very bad in a very short period of time. And um, with the direction of current healthcare policy, we actually anticipate that this might get a little worse. So it's very refreshing to see an organization that is uh, putting forth um, you know, a service in a way that's very honest about what it can and what it cannot do for you and be able to um, work with the patient in a collaborative and truly individualized manner. And, you know, we just uh, wanted to kind of highlight that um, because, you know, I think it's such an important thing in today's, um, in today's world is that we truly work as partners in this, in this um, disease management system and that providing honest expectations is uh, so important in, in that equation. So I just kind of wanted to add that to the conversation before we um, called at the end of the meeting. And I wanted to thank everybody uh, for being here today. It was a uh, very informative, um, really great option for everybody. If anybody who is interested in receiving more information, please feel free to reach out. Our email is info at ciaag.net. Um, and I'm not sure, uh, Alfredo, you wanna leave an email as well if anybody wants to reach out to you or you directly um, with any questions or follow-ups that we might have after the fact. Um, of course, and I will write uh, my email down on the uh, chat room. Perfect. Thank, thank you for that option, Lauren. And I, I also like to mention that we, uh, Geos from Mexico appreciate the privilege of joining a coalition of your noble organization, which uh, seeks to promote um, ethical consideration of what pain is and uh, the needs of the people and in an ethical way without uh, the regular unfortunate, but we, can, uh, we cannot deny interference of 
certain interests that seek to maintain or sustain uh, pain. We all know that sometimes the industry, uh, the medical industry treats the symptoms, not the condition. Yes. And uh, we, we find affinity uh, with your organization and we're truly privileged of having the opportunity to speak and share our vision with us. I'd also like to thank Dr. Anand uh, for his time. And uh, I understand that um, it's a little bit late over there. So thank, thank you, doctor. And it's a little bit early over here. So thank ourselves as well. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed this meeting. Yes, I'd like to echo that. Thank you, Dr. Nudge, for joining us. And uh, we will we will let you go to bed. I hope you have a wonderful evening. It was very informative. And I look forward to um, continuing our partnership. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, and please feel free to reach out if anyone has any questions. The recording will also be on our website after the fact at ciaag.net if anybody wants to go back or if you have other people you want to refer, come check out the video. Um, we also have other meetings up there um, from previous events and we host these events on the first Monday of every month um, at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So feel free to join us um, next month or anytime after that. Thank you everyone and have a fantastic day. You thank too, you. and thank you very much for joining. Thanks. Bye.